I've been a mechanic since I was a kid, probably started around nine or something with go-karts and uh, I've been my entire life now a mechanic and never seen anything like what's going on since they started using ethanol in uh, the gasoline and they didn't give the consumers you know any warning or any chance and there's no alternative um, this, there? this is what happens um, gasoline sits for this can happen as little as three months now there's nothing but goo in here it's just uh, slime that's like uh, almost looks like butterscotch candy left in the window of the car in the hot sun because what's happening is the ethanol is eating away at the rubber and plastic and, and uh, even the coatings that they put on the metal that's supposed to protect it uh, the ethanol eats that away and as it does it it uh, makes um, you know a residue and if you don't run the engine regularly like I tell everybody about you gotta start everything every three weeks at the most to burn it off before it has time to gel up like this um, it also absorbs uh, large quantities of water out of the atmosphere which you know in itself causes you know problems water and uh, gas and engines they don't mix Guess they won't that. run the water sits on the bottom can you uh, show us an example? Uh, yeah uh, we want to cut for a minute so I can find yeah, some sure. That's right. well, I don't know how long the thing is uh, yeah, it takes a long time don't worry about it normally yeah, here's some right here that came out of something that just sat in their garage. Um, it's hard to see, um, but this is more than half water to fuel. Um, and, and this is fresh gas people are using. They buy it fresh. You know, they sway it and they come in and, you know, they fill the thing up and they put it away for a couple months and they go back and when I drain it out, a large quantity of it is water. Uh, instead of fuel, so not only is it eating away at the rubber, um, is that fuel hose? Don't want to, oh, right here. Here's a hose out of a machine that was, I think it was about a year and a half old. Uh, on the outside, looks fine, but if you bend it, it just snaps. And uh, what has happened is it's completely melted. You know, it almost looks like it was on fire. <laughs> but it was not. The whole inside is just turned into um, just goo. It, it just melts it, literally um, melts it into, and it's completely plugged. Nothing can go through it. And uh, this is all, you know, due to ethanol. Um, I know a bunch of boat owners that some of these boats have eight carburetors on them per engine, two engines, you know, that's 16 carburetors at 400 to, you know, even more for each one, and it's eating them out. Uh, the fuel tanks are getting eaten out of the boats, and then, you know, all that fuel ends up in the, you know, in the lake, the pond, reservoir, uh, and a lot of these boats are built around the fuel tank, and, you know, it's not like you just drop it down and replace it. I mean, you're talking sometimes tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage, and, and it's all ethanol. Um, and that's with 10% ethanol. What happens? 10% is, uh, is causing all this. Now they're talking about raising it. it it's just going to, I mean, no lawnmower is going to work. No boat is going to work. Uh, Cars get by because some of them are actually designed now to run on this percentage of ethanol, but the lawnmowers were not, the boats were not, and the more they add, the quicker it's destroying them. Uh, granted, it keeps me in business. I have an awful lot of work. Almost every machine that comes in here that doesn't run is carburation problem, and it's all traced straight back to the ethanol. It's eating away the rubber, the residue's built up in there, turns into a gel. Everything's plugged. I got to take it apart, soak it overnight in a certain chemical. There's only one type of stuff that actually eats it. Uh, carburetor cleaner, you know, gum out doesn't work, doesn't touch it. Uh, you have to, you know, this stuff right here, um, chem dip. You gotta take it out, take it apart, put it in here, which is overnight, and then clean out the passages manually, put it back together, and you're fine until you let it sit for, you know over a month, two months. Um, you can't 
put your lawnmower away in the fall anymore and take it out in the spring and expect it to run. If it does, you're very, very lucky. Um, nine out of ten of them are not going to start if they sit from fall till spring. And same with you know snow blowers that sit during the summer when you go to get them in the fall when you need them. They're not going to run. Generators, uh, forget it. The only thing that works is uh, stable seems to help, but uh, the, the only thing you can do is you have to run them regularly. Uh, and basically, that's it. And um, what's, what's, what do you think is going to happen with the 15 percent once they put it into the cars? It's just going to. I mean, this stuff's all going to happen sooner. Right now, I tell everybody you got to run it every three weeks. They go up to 15 percent. You're probably going to have to start everything you have every week, and, and that may not even work. And even if you're running it, you're still going to have to replace the diaphragms that are in the carburetor, uh, the seals, the hoses. Uh, that's another thing, the hoses now that are in all these small, uh, small type engines. Um, these here that have these little, uh, little hoses, um, they used to be fine with gas. Now they turn hard and brittle after only a few weeks. And then if you bend them, they end up snapping. And they also use the hose to seal in these tanks. And if they don't stay pliable, they don't seal. Um, they get hard, and now the gas is leaking. So not only is this damaging, you know, people's equipment, but it also becomes a safety issue if you've got gas leaking. Um, and like I said before, with the boats, you know, you're leaking fuel into the lake and the reservoir. Um, that's an environmental issue. You know, I, I know that people like to make a big deal about that. You know, they don't so much care about people and their lawnmowers and whatnot. But uh, I know they're not going to like all this gas from these boats going into the lakes and reservoirs and the ground. Um, and, and they're not even keeping the, the levels correct. I believe they, they went around and they tested the gas stations. Uh, one gas station had 37% ethanol as Whoa. opposed to 10. It's supposed to have, it says 10 or less. Uh, they tested them and it was gas station had 37%. And a lot of them were way over what they said, but one was as high as 37%. They say and, that there's some uh, gases that you get there that are lower in ethanol than others. Is that true? Not that I've found. I can't find that. I believe I've been told that it's, you know, uh, government regulation that they have to have ethanol. You can't buy gas that doesn't have ethanol in it anymore. Um, they're going to need to do is the, the way they do with diesel. They have off-road diesel, on-road diesel. You don't pay the tax, you know, for the on-road diesel if you're putting it in your tractor or, uh, or whatever because you're not driving on the highway, so you don't have to pay, you know, the tax that normally goes to repair the highways. Well, they're going to have to have gas separate for lawnmowers and boats that just do not contain any ethanol or replace everybody's machines with stuff that's... Um, ethanol ready, but uh, nothing is ethanol ready. No small equipment is. When you buy the replacement parts for them, the warranty is void if used with ethanol. So any parts you buy for your lawnmowers, say right on them, uh, no warranty if used with gasoline with ethanol. And that's exactly what you're putting it in. So it's just a you know lose-lose situation for the consumer uh, with small engines. And it's not just lawnmowers, it's all small engines, you know, generators, um, log splitters, you know, any um, anything other than the cars, really, that have been designed to burn the ethanol. And you don't notice it in the cars as much because, A, the, a lot of them are designed for use, and B, you're using them regularly. The passages are bigger, um, so they're cleaning and burning out all the, you know, deposit as you drive it, so you're not noticing it. 